Hello and welcome to worship with members of Haywards Heath, Burgess Hill and Hurst Pierpoint Methodist Churches. My name is the Reverend Will Fletcher, I'm the minister of those churches and we meet today for worship in the midst of the week of prayer for Christian unity. It is a week designated each year where churches around this country and around the world pray together for the union and unity of God's church. And so many of our resources today in our act of worship have been prepared by the Churches Together in Britain and Ireland Writers Group and also the Canadian Council of Churches. It is a worship service that has been uh, inspired by the Christian churches in Minnesota in the United States who have been asked this year to set the theme for the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity and their focus very much is on racial injustice and the need for justice to be sought in order for unity to be achieved. And so as we begin our worship, let us pray. God is here, the Spirit is with us. How great is this place, for it is the touching place of God. In Christ, we are gathered from the edges and woven into the dream. Here we feel the hint of heaven, where justice, love and mercy meet. Here we celebrate the blessedness of unity in God. We who were once far off are brought near. And so we pray, God, creator of all in your love, you have made each one of us in your grace. You gather us together in your image. You make us restless until we find our rest in you. Disturb us in our contentment. Distract us from our comforts. Deter us from our conflicts until your kingdom comes and your will is done. Amen. And so as we seek God's presence with us, we sing together. Be still for the presence of the Lord.
And so we hear our two Bible readings today. Shortly we're going to hear the reading from Luke's Gospel and the story of the Good Samaritan. But first we hear a couple of verses from the prophet Micah, chapter 6, beginning at verse 6. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. And now from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning at verse 25. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, giving them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so as we reflect on those words, to respond to God's call to go and show mercy. As we reflect on our calling as followers of Jesus, so we sing our next hymn. It is one from a Spanish author and the English translation that we have today is, Lord, you have come to the lakeshore. to the seashore, neither searching for the rich nor the wise, desiring only that I should follow. O oh Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling spoken my name. All I long for I have found by the water. At your side I will seek other shores. Lord, see my goods, my possessions. 
In my boat you find no power, no wealth. Will you accept then my nets and labor? Oh Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name. Seek other shores. Lord, take my hands and direct them. Help me spend myself in seeking the lost. Returning love for the love you gave me. set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name, all I long for I have found by the water, at your side I will seek other shores, Lord. My life's companion, my friend and refuge. Oh Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name. Side, I will seek other shores. At your side, I will seek other shores. And so let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations and reflections of all our hearts and minds be guided by you, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. The problem with having a week of prayer for Christian unity is that it can give the impression that praying for Christian unity is only a once a year activity. It comes nice and early in the year, so we can tick it off and then get back to the more important matters. However, nothing should be further from the truth. Prior to his arrest and crucifixion, Jesus prayed that we might all be one as he and God are one. This isn't just a nice extra if we've got the time or the people interested, but an important statement to the world about the nature of the God we profess. One of my great joys over the last year or so has been going into one or two care homes and independent living settings, leading worship. In those places, we have Christians of all persuasions worshipping together, a proper example of Christ's body on earth in all its diversity. We may not all think alike, but we can at least love alike. As I've already said, the theme set for this year's week of prayer for Christian unity comes from the Minnesota Council of Churches in the United States. It was in their state in 2020 that George Floyd, an African-American, was killed by a white policeman whilst being arrested. The theme of the week is therefore a challenging one. Do good, seek justice. It reminds us that our prayer for unity 
isn't just about coming together with others who are like us or similar to us, but leads to action to see justice in our world. Both readings speak clearly of the fact that our faith in God isn't just about our worship and prayers, but must be a faith that is lived out in the world as well. What God requires is that we show justice, love mercy and walk humbly with God. In practical terms, this means that we seek to show mercy and love in practical ways to those in need, whoever they are. Even if we don't agree with them, or even feel hostility towards them, or them towards us. The call to love trumps all other concerns. But in the midst of the challenge is the good news. In Christ and through God's Spirit, there is always the possibility for reconciliation and the ability for bridges to be built for those who are open to do so. Christ's death and resurrection demonstrate that there is no relationship beyond the grace-filled work of God. There is also good news in that God has a passion for justice and does not turn a blind eye to oppression. Finally, God delights in the beautiful diversity of humanity, whatever ethnicity, gender, disability, sexuality or age. So do not give up praying for unity with our brothers and sisters of all traditions, that we may be a sign of the life and presence of God, and more powerfully speak and act for just justice, mercy and love. Amen. And so as we prepare to come and pray for God's church and world, we sing once more, Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Oh. 
as we come to our prayers of intercession, there is a response. When I say the words, God of grace, I invite you to respond. Teach us and show us the way. God of grace, teach us and show us the way. With faith we come in prayer before God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Creator God, today we live with the consequences of actions that have made life unsustainable for some and overabundant for others. Teach us to know how to use responsibly the resources you have given to us for the benefit of all and the respect of your creation. The groaning creation cries out to you. God of grace, teach us and show us the way. Compassionate God, help us to repair the harm that we have inflicted upon each other and the divisions we have created among your people. Just as Christ breathed the Holy Spirit onto the disciples to birth the community of the new creation, send your grace to heal our divisions and gift us with the unity for which Jesus prayed. God of grace, teach us and show us the way. Christ, the way, the truth and the life, you embodied justice in your ministry on earth by the good that you did, breaking down the walls that divide and the prejudices that imprison. Open our hearts and minds to recognise that though we are many, we are one in you. God of grace, teach us and show us the way. Holy Spirit, you create anew the face of the earth. The summit of the mountains, the thunder of the sky, the rhythm of the lakes speaks to us because we are connected. The faintness of the stars, the freshness of the morning, the dewdrops on the flower speak to us because we are connected. The voices of the poor, the oppressed and the marginalised speak to us because we are connected. God of grace, teach us and show us the way. But above all, our hearts soar to you, for we cry out, Abba, Father as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn, We Are Marching in the Light of God. 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 Yeah. 
And so as we come to our final blessing, we use a Franciscan benediction, which is attributed to the earliest followers of St Francis. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom and peace. May God bless you with heart, with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world, so that you can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. May you go with the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>